to our channel. This is again Alex and welcome at EU's Marketplace News. Now today I will, um, yes, I kept my promise. I will be continuing my tour to you to Initiative Q. So here it goes. Now guys, for those who did not have any idea or don't have any idea about Initiative Q, Initiative Q is the brainchild of Saar Wilf, a serial entrepreneur who started his first payment startup last 1997 and later founded a Fraud Sciences, which rede redefined the payment security space and was acquired by PayPal in 20 2008. Wolf has compiled a team of experts from a variety of disciplines, including mathematics, economics, and other social sciences. The economic and monetary models were developed with economist Lawrence White, a professor of monetary theory and policy at George Mason University. White has published numerous articles and books on monetary theory and banking, including the theory of monetary institutions, free banking in Britain, and the clash of economic ideas. The idea behind Initiative Q is to first create a critical mass of users, which can then be harnessed to create the world's best payment network. Therefore, our primary focus is to get millions of Q members registered, after which we will continue recruiting the world's top professionals in payment systems, macroeconomics, and internet technologies. So, guys, here, we have stopped yesterday at um, economic models. So, I will be showing to you the Q payment network. All right. Initiative Q's payment model. Initiative Q is creating a modern payment network that will aggregate the best ideas, innovations, and technologies developed in recent years. The Q payment network will allow safe, fast, and low-cost transactions using a global currency. Now, many of the ideas that Initiative Q will include already exist in some form, but thus far, they have gained only limited acceptance, and there is no universal system that integrates them all. Now, this is due to a classic chicken and egg barrier. No buyer wants to join a new network with no sellers, and no seller will offer a payment option that no buyer uses. Initiative Q will overcome this barrier by distributing its currency, Q, for free to early adopters, creating incentive for its adoption and use. This paper gives a taste of the innovations and improvements that the Q payment network will offer. Ease of use. The cards and cash in our wallets are antiquated ways to identify, um, identify us and keep a count of our funds. These functions can be easily integrated into a smartphone. You can just walk into a store without your wallet and your payment account is quickly identified using digital methods such as um, QR code or an audible code. An RFID sticker on the phone can be used as um, back up when the battery is dead. So checking out can be even further simplified. With a Q app, you can enter a store, scan the barcode of the items you want with the phone or a camera, and simply walk out. At restaurants, you can just leave when you're done as your phone settles the bill directly with the restaurant server. No flagging down the waiter, no delays. Wow! There's also no need to fill out forms each time you visit a new online store. Once you authorize your device, you are automatically, um, automatically identified and you can confirm payment with one click. Companies like Apple, Google, and Amazon have developed such features, but they are still using a small fraction of transactions. So Initiative Q will make them standard. Wow, so Initiative Q will make our lives more convenient, right? <clears throat> so, fraud prevention. Sellers spend 8% of their revenue on fraud-related costs. Every instance of fraud takes money from the system and forces sellers to take costly precautions. Costs eventually borne by the buyers through higher prices. However, there is a wealth of information and technology that can dramatically reduce fraud once integrated into the payment network. We already have access to some amazing technology. Our smartphones include fingerprint sensors, 
GPS, a camera and microphone that can recognize our face and voice, as well as the most advanced encryption capabilities. These can be used to implement highly secure multi-factor authentication methods, which would make it far more difficult to steal our identity. Compared to the very crude address verification services, or AVS, used by credit cards, which only compares the digits of the billing address, the Q Payment Network will be able to verify more information at higher accuracy and incorporate more modern information sources such as social media accounts. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Initiative Q can also employ the latest algorithms to analyze individuals' digital behavior. Technology currently offered by companies such as Forder and Riskify, but only used in only a small fraction of transactions. The use of a centralized payment page for all Q users will help establish patterns of appropriate and inappropriate behavior, leading to a far more reliable fraud assessment than any individual seller could accumulate one alone. Rather, The above technologies are already available and only need to be integrated by Initiative Q, but there is one capability that is unique to the Q payment network. Since every new member must be verified by an existing member who risks losing their reward in case of fraud, the Q Payment Network will build a network of trust relationships that can be used to verify transactions. For example, the system can require that for large or suspicious purchases, a trusted friend must contact you directly and verify that you authorize the transaction. Wow. Next, promoting proper business practices. Too much of the contemporary retail economy is based on misleading practices. Cases where the seller knows the what um, knows that the value to the buyer is lower than it seems, or that final costs are higher than presented. These practices include free trials that turn into paid commitments without warning, unexpected price changes, and promoting products with false promises or deceitful marketing. This ultimately hurts everyone involved. It leads to skepticism by potential customers who must constantly be vigilant and hurts legitimate businesses who must compete against deals that are too good to be true and are eventually forced out of the market, further harming consumers. So Q will go further than standard customer protection laws creating a network where buyers don't need to constantly worry about whether they are being scammed and sellers can focus on quality rather than assuaging such concerns. <clears throat> so how do we do that? By making dishonest practices a legitimate reason for transaction reversal, thus motivating sellers to share all information that may reasonably affect purchase decisions even if the law doesn't require it. Initiative Q will require customer confirmation for any changes in payment arrangements such as raising fees. Additionally, buyers will see customer reviews on each seller's um, payment page to ensure better service and to incentivize respect from both sellers and buyers. Initiative Q has the unique ability to ensure that reviews are only provided by verified buyers who made an actual purchase from the seller, evading the problem of fake reviews, praising one business or discrediting the competition. Through these measures, the Q Payment Network will become an environment where buyers no longer need to worry about scams and sellers can focus on creating value to buyers. Wow. <clears throat> so this is really a good idea of them. So reversibility and dispute arbitration. No matter how good a system is, if humans are involved, there will be mistakes and misunderstandings. That's why reversibility or one of the limitations of Bitcoin is so important. Allowing transactions to be reversed benefits both buyers and sellers in um, in the long term as customers are more willing to engage in the market when they have a measure of protection. Moreover, 
This is already a feature of credit cards and any system that seeks to overtake them will have to provide similar assurances. So the Q payment network can also include an automated dispute resolution process with an easy to use interface that allows users to submit claims and upload evidence to support those claims. Disputes that cannot be resolved automatically can be assigned to a trained representative who investigates the claims to determine whether there has been a violation of the Q payment network regulations. If the agent finds that the seller was at fault, then the transaction can be reversed. While in cases where both sides acted appropriately, example, an authorized charge, the buyer can be reimbursed by initiative Q, such as reimbursement can be paid from a global insurance pool finance from transaction fees. All right, so security. Parental, department, uh, parental and departmental controls. Sub accounts can be easily set up to all allocate funds, authorize expenses, and provide easy access to the full history of transactions. This is perfect for children or, or, or expense accounts that need to be supervised. Um, a similar feature can facilitate bill sharing for restaurants, utilities, and other shared expenses. Reporting. Buyers can have um, instant access to their full transaction history, including precise times and um, locations for when and where transactions were authorized, what verification method was used, a copy of, of the invoice, details and images of the products, delivering tracking data, an instant messaging option to communicate with the seller, and a link to the Initiative Q dispute resolution form. <laughs> This would be a major improvement over the vague references and line items on today's credit card statements. Credit allocation. Combining the most advanced technology and analytical methods with information provided by users can lead to a far more accurate and equitable assignment of credit. More data and more nuanced um, application of that data lead to better informed decisions, for example, New users can be evaluated on the basis of the reputations of those who have verified them or the basis of the reputations um, or are connected to them. This will provide significant improvements over the current credit scoring system, which relies on only on payment history, retains inaccuracies for long periods of time, and promotes debt. So, ban free and hassle free. Worldwide, 38% of the uh, um, adult population doesn't have a bank account. In some areas, it's far higher. In Colombia and Peru, it's over 60%. And in the Middle East, it's over 80%. Initiative Q will address this issue, allowing people all over the world to make deposits, purchases, sales, money transfers, and investments without ever needing access to a bank. This can be especially beneficial in conflict and post-conflict regions. Wow, we have already a solution for non-bank people. So transaction cost. Cash remains the most common retail payment instrument used in 32% of all transactions in the US and 79% in the EU. In a survey of payment methods in Asia, 57% said they use cash most often, but this reliance on paper has a cost. Printing, storing, transporting, and sorting paper takes time and money. It is estimated that use of cash costs around $100 billion per year in the U.S. alone. Checks are not much better, costing U.S. companies tens of billions of dollars a year to process. Clearly, Moving to a digital system can save enormous cost, while credit card and debit cards circumvent these problems. They introduce other higher costs resulting from their use of outdated technology. Because the Q payment network will use a unified system and currency and operate digitally using the most advanced technology, transaction fees can be much lower Furthermore, by reducing fraud and scam attempts, Initiative Q can also greatly reduce the hidden fees that manifest in higher product prices. 
All right. Universal, um, universality. We live in a global economy. Everything should be connected. With Initiative Q, it finally will be. All right. The Q Payment Network offers a unified system for payments, sales, and transfer transfers that works everywhere instantly. The same currency is used in all territories, avoiding the need to exchange currencies at hefty fees. All right. AML or anti-money laundering. One of the main causes for complexity in payments is the need to comply with regulation for prevention of money laundering. This is why international wires can take days and cost $20 to $100 each. The Q currency resides solely on the Q network and therefore each Q can be tracked to its source, eliminating the need for AML procedures and paving the way for instant, uh, instantaneous cross-border money transfers. Right. Efficient market. Today, a large portion of purchases occur as a result of the seller's marketing efforts, even though nearly all of those efforts are unsuccessful. This means consumers are constantly bombarded with useless messages, draining their time and attention, and increasing product prices. Through advanced analysis of buyer profiles in transaction history, <clears throat> Initiative Q can transform market dynamics. Instead of sellers aggressively convincing consumers they need their products, the focus will shift to identifying real customer needs and finding the products that best fulfill those needs. Right, so we will be um, ending to buy our needs, not just we think that we need, right? Content monetization. The complexities and cost of current payment systems make small immediate payments for content impossible, requiring content creators to rely on advertising revenue. A universal low-cost digital payment system can finally enable users to consume content ad-free by charging a negligible amount, similar to what an ad would generate, typically a fraction of a cent, uh, of a cent per page or video. Right. Architecture. Initiative Q aims to become the world's primary payment network. That requires establishing locations all over the world, complying with local regulations, and providing quality customer service. <clears throat> to reach this goal quickly, Initiative Q will focus only on technology standards and regulation, while delegating the financial operation to hundreds of local agents. These local agents will be responsible for customer service, safeguarding members' funds, connecting local stores, legal compliance, and settling with other agents. So here, agents compete with each other to manage member accounts, buyers or sellers, and receive a small fee for transaction they process. A typical transaction on the Q payment network is processed as follows. First, buyer goes to a seller's store or website. Second, if online, if online, the buyer chooses the Q payment option and is identified by the Q payment network. Third, if in a physical store, the buyer's Q smartphone app connects to the seller's point of sale system, which sends the transaction details to the Q payment network. Four, the app requests the buyer's approval. Depending on the size and risk of the purchase, additional security measures may be invoked. Fifth, the buyer's agent is notified of the transaction by the Q payment network. Sixth, the buyer's agent server verifies that the buyer has sufficient cues to cover the purchase and if so, notifies the seller's agent. Seven, the seller is notified that the transaction was successful and provides the product or service to the buyer. And eighth, periodically all agents settle their outstanding balance over the Q internal network. This settlement may utilize a blockchain ledger, enjoying the advantage of cryptocurrency while protecting customers from its many shortcomings. All right. So guys, current payments networks rely on outdated technologies. They are decades behind in security, ease of use, and reporting credit management. Um, 
resulting in high fees and overhead costs. By distributing its currency too early, adopters Initiative Q overcomes the barriers that prevented adoption of the many payment innovations made over the years. Once an easy to use, faster, more secure, globalized system is widely available, it will quickly become buyers and sellers preferred method of payment. So guys, it's time for Initiative Q. All right, so that has been the second webisode about Initiative Q. Now, for tomorrow, yes, because I want you to be, you know, excited more about it and eager to know more. I will cut the video off right now about Initiative Q and I will be giving you the third batch, all right? The third tour tomorrow and I will be discussing the timeline and the facts, all right? So, guys, that's all for today's um, tour uh, for Initiative Initiative Q. So, <clears throat> as we can see on that part, on that part already, we can say that Initiative Q will make our lives more convenient and it will make us all happy, right? Okay, now, um, yes, I promised again that I will be consuming the third tour tomorrow for another video. So I will be posting some information on the um, description box or information box. So check it out, all right? Now, thank you so much for um, <clears throat> watching this video. And please don't forget to hit that like button. And please don't forget to subscribe on our channel, all right? This has been Alex. Thank you so much. Bye.